Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Our day is beginning, there's so much to do. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? It seems like forever since I saw you, even though it's only been a week. So let's start with our ABCs, shall we? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And our letter today is the letter B. 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 Hmm, what starts with the B sound? Can you think of anything? How about um, bees and bears? Because we did those stories, remember? And what else starts with the b? b. Bobby, um, Lou. Did somebody say birds? Right, birds. That's what we're going to talk about today. And I thought about that today when I was looking at this beautiful portrait. A picture that my daughter-in-law painted for me or drew for me at Christmas time and it shows a male a, a, the dad and the woman cardinal the male and female cardinal and they're a very special bird to me my mother used to love the cardinals and I like seeing the bright red and during the winter and even during the summer so let's do some counting first what number shall we count to not a real little number how about in the middle did somebody say nine? That's a good number. That's how old my grandson Nicholas is, nine years old. So let's count to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, almost two hands, nine. Count to nine, very good. All right. Now we're going to read our first story called A Nest Full of Eggs. And it was by Priscilla Belts Jenkins. Can you see on there? That's a pair of robins. Robins are a bird we look for for the sign of spring. They're brown and have a reddish orange breast or belly on them. And when they lay their eggs, they're a beautiful sky blue color. So this is called A Nest full of eggs and the person who wrote it was Priscilla Jenkins. She's the author, the person who wrote the story. And it's illustrated or the pictures here were made by Lizzie Rockwell. Look, that's blue like the sky blue of the eggs. If you listen, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. That is the song of the robin. It must be spring. Up in a tree, outside my window, a pair of American robins is very busy. They are gathering dry weeds and twigs. They work very carefully, but quickly. It's almost time. So see, they're building up in the tree. I don't know if you can see these little pictures. The female weaves the branches and twigs together to make a round bowl and she adds some mud to them to glue them together. Then she adds more mud, pressing it with her breast or her stomach to make a cup shape. Then she lines the bottom of the nest with a bed of soft grasses and sometimes they pull some of their, uh, their feathers out and put in there too. And then the nest is strong and safe and snug and it's all ready. What do you think they're going to put in those in that nest? You're right, that's where she's going to lay her eggs. 
Over the next few days, the female robin lays four beautiful blue eggs in the nest. There it is, it's empty. Then there's one egg, two eggs, three eggs, and finally four eggs. Now she is sitting on the nest now to keep the eggs warm and her mate, Mr. Cardinal, is close by and he sings very loudly, warning other robins to stay away from the nest. Inside each egg is a tiny new life. It is growing very fast. The yellow yolk, if you've seen your eggs that mummy fixes, they're different, they're chicken eggs for breakfast, but the yellow part is called the yolk. That's the food for the baby birds. And the clear part is called albumin, which is the white of an egg. And it is watery, it's a watery cushion for the baby to grow inside. Day after day, the mother robin sits on her eggs, patiently waiting. Now, can you see this picture there? There's the inside of the egg with the white and the yellow. And in the middle is a little dot, and that's where the baby bird will start to grow. In three days, can you see this picture? In three days, there's the eye of the bird. The, the life begins to look like a head, and it has a backbone, a heart, and eyes. And already the heart is beating, just like a baby. After five days, a beak, two wings, two legs, and a tail are taking shape. And it's beginning to look like a baby bird in there. I don't know if you can see. Over here you can see this one a little bit better. After about eight days, the robin is completely formed right down to its toes. Can you see that? See the toes down here and the eye and the beak and the back of the bird. And then over here, after 12 days, the baby bird is finally all formed. Now it doesn't have any feathers on it. It looks sort of ugly because it's all skinny looking. But it's so big that it is squeezed inside the egg and it has used up all the food and space. If you listen, peep, peep, peep. A tiny beak is breaking through the eggshell. The eggs are hatching. Crack, out rolls a baby robin. Soon there are four wobbly little robins in the nest. Their parents feed them worms, berries, seeds, and insects. But the hungry nestlings, the little robins, are always peeping and squawking for more food. And they sit there in their nest with their mouths wide open, just waiting for mommy and daddy to come and feed them. In a few days, the baby robins open their eyes. They're soft and warm, fuzzy little down, that's the, with their real soft feathers, begin to shape up on their body. Can you see? There's just a few little things. Then bigger feathers grow and cover the downy feathers and they keep the robins dry and give them color and shape. And about 14 days after hatching, the robins have grown their wing and tail feathers. These are their flight feathers, the feathers that they need to fly. Now feathers are light, but very strong. Can you see some feathers here? They are what makes birds different from all the other creatures on earth. Only birds have feathers. We don't have feathers. We can pretend to flap our wings and fly, but we can't really fly and we don't have feathers. Now feathers come in many sizes and shapes and colors. So on this page are some of the feathers. This big long one here that's brown with the black, and that's a pheasant's feather. And this one that's real curly and it looks like an eye on it. That is a peacock feather. And this one down here that is blue and gray, that's a blue jay's feather. And this one that looks sort of almost like a triangle, that is a duck. So they come in all different shapes and sizes because birds come in all different shapes and sizes. Now robins, like all birds, take good care of their feathers. They comb them and straighten them with their beaks. They clean them by taking baths in water or dust. 
If you have a bird bath in your yard like this, the birds will come and take a bath. Just like the boys and girls are playing in the water during the summer. Now the young robins are getting ready to leave their nest, but they are not good flyers yet. They are still learning for the learning. So for the next few weeks, their parents stay close to them and bring them food. See how they're starting to get out of the nest a little bit, move around, and they'll keep trying until they're ready to go. Soon the robins are ready to fly and hunt on their own. Now they can take care of themselves. Next spring, they will find mates and have nests of their own. And there are birds all over the world and they build their nest in different places. Some build it and just use rocks on the ground. Some of them weave a nest like this one here. And the woodpecker just pecks a hole in the tree trunk and that's where it has its nest. So there's lots of birds all over the world and they all have all different kinds of nests. Now, before I go any further, I just wanted to talk to you about that you're used to coming to the library in the summertime for summer reading. And right now, we're not allowed to let anybody in the building yet because we're trying to keep everybody safe. So we're still going to have some programs on Fridays. During the summer, you can continue to watch me on Storytime every Friday. And uh, we're going to have a special thing at the library. You know how we have the garden path there? The rocks and stuff well each month we're going to put a new book along the path it's called a story stroll and you can go and come up and walk and take your time and you go from page to page and read a story and then hiding among all the rocks and the plants in the garden are going to be secret little fairy things that we're planning and making so please come up that will be open you can come in I'll come anytime during the day and and see the story and um, we're gonna have some lights at night just to twinkle but it's too hard to read the story at night so anyways so you can get online mommy and daddy will have to do this to get onto our website and it has all the information on there I'm not going to go into a whole lot about it now but we'll be starting in the next few weeks that you can register and then uh, instead of having to keep track of your books, mommy can go into the computer and it tells you how to keep track of the books and you can earn pretend little badges for every so many books that you read. And if you don't have a computer, then we're going to have some paper uh, forms at the library. We'll have them outside that you can pick up. I'll get all that information to you and it'll be on our website that you can pick up the pages and do some fun activities and things like that if you don't have a computer to, to take, keep track of your books. So I hope you'll join us. It's called Imagine Your Story. So your imagination, you can think of lots of things and different. So we're going to talk about some fairy tales and um, princesses and witches, nice witches, no mean witches, and um, heroes and different things like that for our stories for the summer. So that will start, the stories for the summer will actually start in about June 19th, but I'm going to continue up till then to have stories and it will go clear through to August. So please keep watching on Fridays. Thank you. Okay, now, um, I thought I'd do a little thing here. I don't know if you can you see my hand and it goes like this. I saw a little birdie go hop, hop, hop. I said, little birdie, won't you stop, stop, stop? I went over to the window to take a look, but he wiggled his tail and away he flew. And then I have another thing. Do you know how we do head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Well, this is about an owl. Do you know what sound the owl makes? You're right. It goes hoot, 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 hoot. And so it goes like this. Big eyes, big wings and claws, wings and claws. Big eyes, big wings and claws, wings and claws. Who flies at night and says hoot hoot. Big eyes, big wings and claws, wings and claws. Very good. Very good. Now, I brought some pictures. I have a special magazine that I get 
called Birds and Blooms, and it has all kinds of pictures of birds in it. So this is a picture of a robin. See how it has some orange or red on its breast? And then this is my favorite, the red cardinal. That's the daddy cardinal. He's nice and bright. In nature, all the birds, the daddy birds, have all the pretty colors and the mummy birds aren't so pretty. And this little yellow bird here is called a, an ori, or a goldfinch. Sometimes we see goldfinch around here, but usually they're in the summertime, not all the time that we see the goldfinch. And then I wanted to show you this. What, what's this one down here? You're right, that's an owl. And it says hoot, 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 hoot. And this one, you don't see too often, but they're coming around here a little bit more. It's a big bird. It's called an eagle. One time Miss Judy goes up to, to um, a cabin up around Meadville and there's eagles that nest up at the cabin up there and we see the eagles. And this is a woodpecker. See how it has some red on its head? It likes to tap on the tree to get the bugs to eat. And then these are some birds that we don't see them around here. This one's from Minnesota. Wait one minute. And it is called a red pole. I liked it because see how it has some red on its head? These are ones you wouldn't see around here, but I just wanted you to see the pictures of some different birds from around. There's this big white bird. Look how it has very long, tall feet. Let's see, that is um, a, let's see. That's called a snowbird, I think. Or oh, wait, no, I don't know. I don't see the name on that. I'm sorry, but I just thought that was an interesting picture. And then look at this one. Can you see its beak? It's hard to see this bird. It blends in with everything around it to hide. That is called a woodcock. And if you look at this bird, look down here, you can see its beak. See how long and skinny it is? And then the last one I have is another downy little woodpecker type of bird. I like the way it had the white and black on it, to ch almost like checkered looking birds. So those are just some different birds that we might not see around here, but maybe at the aviary, if you go down to Pittsburgh, we have a bird aviary. Um, I'm not sure if it's open right now, but when you, they, they might let you take some virtual tours in there, I'm not sure. But anyways, that's where you can go. So my last story is called Tweedle Dee Dee, and it was written by Charlotte Voak. And it's sort of a song that Miss Judy used to sing when I was in Girl Scout. So I'm gonna see if I can do it and not metal, mess it up too much. It's called Tweedle Dee Dee. <clears throat> Once in a wood there was a tree, the finest tree you ever did see. And the green leaves grew all around, all around, and the green leaves grew all around. And on that tree, there was a branch, the finest branch you ever did see. The branch was on the tree, and the tree was in the wood, and the green leaves grew all around, all around, and the green leaves grew all around. And on that branch, there was a nest, the finest nest you ever did see. The nest was on the branch, and the branch was on the tree, and the tree was in the wood, and the green leaves grew all around, all around, and the green leaves grew all around. And in that nest, there were some eggs, the finest eggs you ever did see. Let's stop for a minute and count them. One, two, three, three eggs you ever did see. 
The eggs were in the nest, the nest was on the branch, the branch was on the tree, the tree was in the wood, and the green leaves grew all around, all around, and the green leaves grew all around. And in those eggs, there were some birds, birds one and two, and number three. Cheep went one, cheep went the other, and the third went twiddle dee dee. The birds were in the eggs, the eggs were in the nest, the nest was on the branch, the branch was on the tree, the tree was in the wood. And the green leaves grew all around, all around, and the birds went tweedle-dee-dee. -dee. And that's the story of Tweedle-dee-dee -dee by Charlotte Voke. So let's sing our More We Get Together song. I can't believe our time is already done. I hope you had fun. I'll see you again next time. Remember, I love you. And let's sing. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. See you next time. And don't forget to watch on our website so you can see how to sign up for the summer. Love you. Bye.